Hi, my name's Kate and welcome to another short film prepared by IFM ECS, the knowledge transfer arm of the Institute for Manufacturing here at the University of Cambridge. Recent events have left many manufacturers questioning the levels of resilience and risk in their businesses and supply chains. Decisions about what to do in-house, what to outsource or buy and when to partner are often hard to make. Over time, the linear supply chains of the past have been transformed into complex ecosystems where networks of specialised firms interact with each other over great distances and across a range of business activities. These changes and the complexity that they bring call for new approaches to strategic decision making. IFM researchers have developed a number of tools which can help structure decisions and today we'll be discussing one of these, the IFM Make or Buy approach, developed by David Probert and Ken Platz. This tool also forms one element of a wider IFM methodology, making the right things in the right places, which you can read about in the white paper available to download by following the accompanying link. Make or buy decisions need to balance the benefits of purchasing a part, capability, process or component against the risks that outsourcing can bring. The benefits of outsourcing can be significant, including cost reductions, avoiding capital expenditure, standardisation or market access. The risks, however, can be equally large, including risks to quality, continuity of supply, loss of design control or the accidental creation of new competitors. Because of this, the decision-making process needs to acknowledge a wide range of strategic implications and not just cost. Today we'll be explaining a simple example, but the full make or buy approach has significant depth and can be applied in a wide range of contexts. At the corporate level, this might include defining our core competence strategy. For example, should we attempt to dominate the whole value chain, like Apple, or focus on the design and delivery of specific aspects, like Samsung? At the product level, we might consider aligning our product portfolio with our core competences and develop supply strategies at the category or component level. These are two examples, but the tool can be used in multiple business contexts. There are two major dimensions to make or buy decisions in the tool we'll be using, strategic importance and supplier effectiveness. Our goal will be to use these criteria, combined with the Bespoke Risk Analysis tool, to better understand what to make, what to buy and why. In order to do this, we'll be taking the following steps. Determining the level of the make or buy decision, designing analysis criteria, scoring, interpreting the results and developing the actions needed to optimise our make or buy profile. First, we need to decide at what level to assess our make or buy decision. We can look at components, sub-assembly, final assembly or even end product level, or even look at processes or work packages. The most appropriate level will be determined by the type and complexity of the product. You'll need to decide for yourself on the best approach to take. For the purposes of this simple demonstration, we'll be using the example of a shower pump and considering our product at the component level. Remember, though, that the approach might equally be applied to wider non-physical capabilities such as design, supply chain or business support functions. Next, we need to think about the analysis criteria we're going to use to assess both the strategic importance and supplier effectiveness of each component. We'll then create weightings for each of these criteria based on how important we believe them to be in the final product. To develop criteria for strategic importance, we look at three broad areas, customer value, profit generation and intellectual capital. As you can see, the actual criteria we choose are more specific and relevant to the product that we're considering. For a shower pump, we have selected criteria as shown, but if we were looking at a different product, our selection criteria would also change. Some examples of analysis criteria for the strategic importance of other products are available for download using the link. Now we've selected specific criteria, we need to weight them in terms of importance. For example, for our shower pump, we know that quality and reliability is most important to customers, whereas the uniqueness of our product is relatively limited. It's critical that the overall weightings add up to 100% across all criteria. Next, we look at supplier effectiveness. 
We do this using the generic criteria of quality, cost, delivery and innovation and ask ourselves how our supplier's performance compares to our own performance across each category. Again, we weight each criteria in relation to its importance for the particular product that we've chosen. Once we've chosen our criteria for strategic importance and supplier effectiveness, we're ready to move on to the next step, scoring. It's best to approach scoring by getting views from a cross-functional team, and in many cases a moderated workshop is a good way forward. We're going to assess each component of our product against the criteria we've developed, giving it a score from 1 to 5 in each category. In order to do this, you may wish to use a scoring scale similar to this one, which is included in the documents you can download. Looking first at strategic importance, we'll take as an example the filter used in our final product. We know that the reliability of the filter we use is critical to the quality of our finished product. We also know, however, that they are generic and add little to the uniqueness of our offering. Multiplying our scores by the weightings we've selected and adding them together gives an overall score for the strategic importance of this component. Turning to supplier effectiveness, we now assess each component against the relevant criteria, again assigning a score from 1 to 5. For example, we know that for our filter, potential suppliers are much better in terms of quality and cost than our in-house capability, although we do have concerns over their delivery performance. Again, these scores are multiplied by our agreed weightings and added together to create an overall supplier effectiveness score for the component. Once we have an agreed strategic importance and supplier effectiveness score for each component, we can move on to an initial assessment of the results. We now create a chart with supplier effectiveness on the x-axis and strategic importance on the y-axis and plot each of our components onto it. To help with interpreting the results, we can split the chart into four sections as shown. Starting at the top left quadrant, the components that we've plotted here are of high strategic importance and the effectiveness of other suppliers is low. These are components where we have a core competence and should be made in-house. Moving to the top right quadrant, we have components which are strategically important but where potential suppliers are much more effective than we are. Components in this area of the chart are important but potentially vulnerable and we should carry out a more detailed risk assessment before deciding on our next steps. Components in the bottom right quadrant are not strategically important to us and other suppliers are much more effective. We should aim to buy the components in this area of the chart. In the bottom left hand corner of the chart we find components which do not have high strategic significance but for which effective suppliers are not available. One possible approach for components in this quadrant is to develop suppliers to be more capable and then outsource. This brings us on to the next part of the process, developing actions. As it stands, the chart tells us the status of each component today. However, if we do nothing, over time all components will move towards the buy section of the chart as suppliers become more effective and parts begin to lose their strategic importance. To avoid this, we need to develop the correct action for each segment. For items in the supplier development segment, we need to identify and train a suitable supplier so that scarce capital is not wasted on a non-strategic process, thereby deliberately pushing these components towards the buy section on the chart. For components already in the buy section of the chart, cost is key, and the actions we take here should help move these components towards the most low cost and effective source possible. In the make section, we've identified items where we have core competencies and we should invest in our capability here, ensuring that we stay ahead of the competition. For the tricky items in the top right quadrant, the IFM have developed a risk analysis tool, which can help us decide which action to take. Potential actions may include developing capability and moving items into the core make section of the chart, a make some approach to help head off supplier risk an acquisition or a strategic alliance with a specialist supplier. The risk analysis tool is shown here and also included in the documents below. By working through the tool you should be able to develop a strategic action for each component in the top right section as shown here. So 
That brings us to the end of our quick overview of the IFM Make or Buy approach. If you want to hear more about the process, a link to a webinar delivered by two of our expert industry practitioners can be found through the accompanying link, along with the templates discussed in this video. I hope you found this session useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.